my junior season, UMass was coming back for revenge at Fresno. I was out the whole night before. He played great. Chris had a sensational game, and our arena was rocking. Personal win for Chris Harris. Monday afternoon, we were in the office, and our compliance guy came up and told me Chris tested positive. Christopher Albert Heron, born September 27, 1975. Junkie, the most character crushing word to describe addiction. Aren't we all then? addicted to something? Differences, yours or my addiction, may not have caused us to be expelled from college, fall to the second round of the draft, lose millions of dollars, and forced into rehab in fear of losing our families. Today's feature has literally seen all of what the underworld of drugs has to offer, all while being one of the top players at most of the levels he's been at. In many stunted growth stories, circumstances out of your control can lead to you not having the career you should have or were expected to. In some cases, they are within your control and happen because of your doing. Heron is the poster child for this as he couldn't seem to find something worth giving up his addiction for and it led him down the road of forgotten star that was supposed to be one of the greatest point guards of his generation. Here are three important instances in his life that stunted his growth as a basketball player. Let's get into it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, get him. Chris Heron is a 6'2 point guard from Fall River, Massachusetts. In high school, he was easily one of the top point guards of the 94 class and on some days ranked as a better player than Hall of Famer Allen Iverson. He joined players like Antoine Walker and Kareem Reed in the McDonald's All-American game, to which he'd later state that he hated Reed and Walker. Reed, he says, always had the ball and refused to pass to him in the game, yet he knew he was better than him. Later in the season, he'd meet Kareem's team and vow to outplay the New York guard, and he did. In high school, Heron was the real deal and recruited heavily across the country, including offers from Kentucky and Duke to be their starting point guard. He eventually chose to stay close to home and attend Boston College. At this point, Chris was in the gateway stages of his addiction, only indulging in weed and alcohol. Deciding to attend Boston College and stay in a place he could have access to both and be comfortable, it set the table for his whirlwind career. Stunt number one, time on his hand. Or should I say, wrist. In his first collegiate game after scoring 14 points in 21 minutes, Heron broke his wrist and was sidelined for the remainder of the season. Before playing in his first college game, he failed a drug test for weed and cocaine. With his recent injury, he had all the time in the world and was free to do as he pleased off the floor and began to abuse both drugs and alcohol. Just three months into him being sidelined, he failed two more tests for marijuana and cocaine and was expelled from Boston College. This wrist injury took away Chris's chances of being a one-and-done player who was already on the NBA radar leaving high school and even after just one game in college. It also gave him the very thing he didn't need, which was time away from his basketball responsibilities that saw his using take off. After failing multiple drug tests and being kicked out of school, his chances for leaving after one or even two years were done seeing as he'd have to sit out due to Division I transfer rules when he decided to join Fresno State. In all of his spare time, Heron never thought about staying in the gym and getting better at his craft because as he says, it took time to score these drugs and by the time I was done using, I didn't want to do anything. My sole focus was getting high, and that's all I wanted to do. And that's the thing about addiction to drugs versus anything else. It makes you believe that you are your best self when on it, and for people like Chris Heron, who was a naturally gifted basketball player, he was his best self on the court, to him and on paper as well. 
In his first season with Fresno State, he led the team to a 20-12 record and averaged 17.5 points and 4.6 assists. In his second season with the team, his production dipped a bit with the additions of junior transfers Tremaine Folks and Rafer Alston. Also because at this point, he was a full-blown junkie. Stun number two, I'm Chris Heron and I'm an addict. If you were close to Chris Heron at the time when he was a star at Fresno State and even in the NBA, you knew that getting through to him about quitting his drug use was next to impossible. In fact, he was just getting started. At the beginning of the 97-98 college season and his junior year, Chris failed another drug test and was forced to go to rehab, in which he spent two months away from the team. During this time, his teammate Rafer Alston, who he said he didn't like much as well, was building a name for himself at the point position in Heron's absence. He was averaging a league-leading 7.3 assists a game and eventually only needing the one season at Fresno to be an NBA draft pick. In 29 games together that season, Heron was arguably just as good if not better than Alston and could have left early as well had it not been for the stain of persistent drug user on his jacket. He returned to Fresno State for his senior season and with the addition of Mr. Greenlight himself, Courtney Alexander, his point production declined once again from 17 to 15 to 11 points a game over three years. His assists did shoot up to over 7 a game though, which was good enough to get him drafted with the 33rd overall pick, higher than Ray for Alston the year before. Personal win in the books, it was time for the bad news. Chris Heron, the serial drug abuser, record number drug test failure, full-blown addict sleeping in alleyways, passed out from drug use, and rehab alumni, landed with the worst team possible by just year 2 in the NBA. Stun number three, back to Boston. Chris Heron's life had taken him down so many interesting paths to say the least by the point of being drafted by the Denver Nuggets. The 24-year-old rookie, addicted to cocaine, Percocet, and newfound Oxycontin, found it difficult to get his fix in Denver, although he'd find his way to it and usually be high before every game. After just one season, averaging 3 points and 2 assists in 13 minutes, the Nuggets traded him to his hometown team, the Boston Celtics. For most people, having a chance to play for your hometown team would be an ideal situation. For Chris, it was the worst thing that could happen to his career. He was now in a city where getting drugs was the easiest thing in the world, seeing as he knew exactly where to go and who to talk to for it. He began using every day and was usually high on coke or other drugs every time he stepped foot in the arena. He's even said to have waited outside the Celtic Stadium in the rain in full warm-up uniform minutes before being introduced in the starting lineup for his drug dealer so he could have something to calm him before his first start and to use after the game. Chris's Celtic career lasted just 25 games before he got injured and waived by the team. He went on to play overseas for a while where he continued to use and was sent home by his Italian team before retiring in 2006. His battles with addiction only got worse as he'd be found overdose after crashing into a utility pole in 2008 and was reportedly dead for 30 seconds. His family life was also drowning as his wife had had enough and urged him to get clean or never return home. Finally, he did. After intensive rehabilitation, he's been clean since August 2008 and now travels across the world telling his story and shining light on what could happen if you go down the path he did. All in all, for all Heron went through, he's lucky to even be alive. His story didn't nearly end as tragically as it could have, and some may say for a drug addict and person considered a junkie, his life wasn't so bad. That's if you're looking at his accomplishments and who he is now. But imagine what he could have been if not for these reasons, which was a possible NBA Hall of Famer and lengthy career. If you have a chance to watch Heron speak, pay attention to how lucky he was to make it through so many failed tests that you wouldn't be so lucky to today. 
pay attention to how he was supposed to have been there when his friend was executed after a drug robbery gone wrong, all because he decided to get clean for his family and turn his life around. Salute to Chris Heron, much respect, I wish you nothing but the best, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, and I'm out. Also, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, man. Let's get it.